In this part, we will learn the basics of the stream to understand how the block works and to be able to implement the block pattern in the next part. So, stay with me. Let me give you some great news. You can join our Flutter community on Telegram. Simply join this group to stay in contact with other Flutter developers to learn from each other and to become a better Flutter developer. So don't forget and join now. I want to start with a simple example to explain history. Maybe many of you have seen the conveyor belts in the factories where the products are placed and the product moves on that belt until someone else takes it off the belt somewhere. But what does this have to do with these streams? The conveyor belt is always moving and it works like this. One person places an object at the beginning of the belt and because the belt is moving, the object moves on the belt until another person looks at the belt. And whenever an object comes to his side, he takes it off the belt. This action happens exactly in streams as well. Stream means a flow and it is exactly like this conveyor belt that we can provide this flow and listen to this flow elsewhere and be informed whenever data comes and use it. So now we are familiar with the concept of a stream, but how can we use it in our code? I want to ask a question and try to solve it together. The question is, suppose I want to have a loop in a method that counts from 1 to 10 and sends each number out of the method after 2 seconds without stopping the execution of the method. Well, the first point is that because I want to wait for 2 seconds somewhere in the code and do nothing, I need to use features. And if you are familiar with Dart, you know that in order to use features, our method needs to be async. Now, what is async? But first of all, let's see what is sync. In the sync programming, only one operation can be performed at any moment of time. The code execution starts from the first line and is executed one by one in order of the program lines. But in the async programming, several operations can be performed at any moment of time. Now, I will give you a simple example so that you can understand better. Suppose you go to a restaurant and order a pizza. While your pizza is being prepared, the waiter goes to other tables and takes the order of the rest of the people. This type of function is called async. Now suppose the waiter takes your order and doesn't go to the other customers until he gets the pizza you ordered. This type of function is called sync. Well, now let's go back to our main question. First, I want to write a code and then we will analyze it together. So, in this code, I made the method async. First, I put a loop in the body to rotate 10 times and then I waited for 2 seconds and returned that value. Do you think this code is correct? Definitely not because when it comes to return I line here, it sends out the number 1 but that method also stops because we have return here. So, what should I do to fix this and return all 10 numbers without stopping the method? Yes, we need a stream to create a stream for us and send us these 10 numbers in this history. So, our method should still be async, but instead of returning future, it should return history. And in order for us to be able to use the feature that returns data to us without stopping the method, we should use async star instead of the async keyword. Async stars does exactly the same thing that it says during execution. This method continues after returning a data and does not stop. This code now does exactly what we want. The keyword yields tells exactly to return this value of i, but be aware that execution of the method does not stop and continues. Well, we have now written a code that opens a stream of ints for us and we send our data to it. But how do we listen to it? Each stream has a method called listen that we can listen and find out whenever data reaches us. The get number for our method returns us a stream so we can use the listen method and find out what data we receive in this history. Well, so far we have learned about the stream and the listen method in the streams. There are two more things that we will learn together now. The first one is a stream controller. 
Suppose you want to have a stream that you can send data on that stream whenever you want. In this case, you can use a stream controller. This stream controller will return you a stream and also a series of methods that you can use to add data to that stream or listen to it and have overall controller over that stream. I will explain this stream controller with a series of codes. This is how to make a stream controller. There is a very important point when you make a stream controller. You must close that stream somewhere because if you don't do this, you will have a memory leak in your program. The best place to close the streams is in the dispose method of widget classes. Well, now we want to send data on this stream. This can be done using sync and calling add method on sync. And to listen to the stream controller, it is enough to access its stream and use the listen method. So, in general, there are two very important features in streams. First one is sync, which we can actually use the put data on the stream. Second one is listen method, which we can listen to the stream and understand the output data from the stream. Well, the discussion of streams is over here. I try to give a general and brief introduction about them. In the next video, we will try to implement a small project using streams and the block pattern. Just note that we will use the block pattern and not the block package. So stay with me.